Hi, I'm Sean Arnold, and this is another brief, brave attempt in learning. We're about to dive into using interactive displays, specifically a Promethean Active Panel, and we're going to look at some of the hardware basics you need to know. Everybody enjoys these interactive displays and playing around on them. Well, I'm going to be demoing today specifically on a Promethean Active Panel Titanium, but this is very similar to the way things will work on other Prometheans and interactive displays as well. How's it going? So I'm going to show you some of the basics that these sort of interactive displays, particularly this Promethean board, can do. All right, but let's start with some of the hardware basics. We've got our big flat panel display here. I got all these buttons in the front, cords and cables. Now they're going to tell you that these boards can do everything you want by themselves, and they are awesome. And you never need to plug in a device or project a device. Cool, and you can do a lot straight from the board. But there are a lot of times where you'll also want to hook up a computer to show and participate in some other things. And for that, we're going to need to dive into that hardware piece. That includes some of the hardware cords and cables that are coming out of the side of the board or here in the front. So the boards can seem like a real big mess with cords coming out over here and this way and that. And you don't know which one goes to which and then you try to wirelessly project and get the Wi-Fi and put your iPad to show on the screen. But are we connected to the same network? I don't know. So how do we make sense of that? So whether you've got a computer hooked up or a wireless monitor or it's connected to a projector or it requires a remote or some other switcher, the display button is where the magic happens. So let's break it down. You can start with your built-in display and all you need for that is a power cord. Then you can connect it to a computer using HDMI or something to that effect or VGA. HDMI gives you video and audio. VGA only gives you the picture. Now, which one you're using and where you're plugged in on the side or in the front of the board is entirely dependent on the age of your display, the age of your computer, the layout of your room. So I can't give you a lot of specifics on that. But I can tell you that if you're using a VGA, you'll also need an audio cable for sound. Uh, USB is what allows you to have a touch screen. And it's the easiest thing to do if you're having issues where you just want to show something and kids are touching the screen and you don't want them to because we're in a pandemic. Well, just unplug that. That's one of the easiest ways to do it. Separately, you might have to have an adapter or some type to plug into it simply because of the kind of computer that you have. So now for those cords and cables, let's get started on the board. You've got all your buttons down here. I don't think I need to explain stuff like power and volume, but if you hit that volume button, you'll see you also get access to all these other sorts of buttons we'll go through later, like brightness and contrast, etc., etc. The big important button here is the one that looks like a fire. That's your Promethean button. You hit that and it pulls up all of these icons at the bottom which lets you get to all your other applications that are inside of it. Yeah, you can just pull that up from any other sort of side of the screen too. That works also, but that button is a nice place to have it. Now the other buttons down here include a turn touch off. Now I know I said you could pull out that USB cord and that works, but if I'm going ahead and write in on here and I want that to stop, I hit that button to turn that off. Uh-oh, touch screen is done. A really important button is the source button. Now, I can find that again from this Promethean area or right on the board itself. I hit one like that. And it gives me two options, home, HDMI 2, because those are the only places I'm all plugged into at the moment. I'm going to select the one that has the HDMI cable and it's going to open up my computer. And I'm going to realize everything here is super tiny and I can barely see it. But what can we do about that? So I'm here in system preferences. I'm on a Mac. Uh, this works as well on a Windows computer similarly. But I'm going to go to the displays area. And inside of here tells me where I can optimize this for. This is great, except I'm going to choose scale. And I'm going to go ahead and choose slightly larger because I'm old and my eyes hurt. And there we go. That's a little bit better. So that's the source button. So I can have a laptop plugged in like I do now. I can have another desktop plugged in at the same time. I might have a USB drive plugged in where I want to pull data and files from. The final button down here that we're going to look at is the freeze button. It's only meaningful if you want to show something on your display while working on something else on your computer. Which is neat, because I can have up here the periodic table, and it looks like we're deeply studying its information, but in the background of my computer, I'm actually playing in Minecraft, and now I'm messing with the periodic table there. And nobody was the wiser. 
you might have some other issues with audio and video and I might have to go to the display settings again to make sure that they're mirrored properly so that what's showing on my computer is showing up here. Now, I'm still having audio issues. Why isn't my music playing? Okay, so I head on over and I go to my sound settings and I notice that my output, oh, it's set to my computer. Well, let's go ahead and set it to this display. Well, I hope this helped.